Again, lower the patient's gown to his waist and inspect his chest. Note its symmetry and observe the costal angle, angle of the ribs, intercostal spaces, and muscles of respiration. When comparing the back, sides, and front, see if the anteroposterior or AP diameter is about half the size of the transverse diameter as it normally is in adults. For an older adult, however, the AP diameter is likely to be more than half the size of the transverse diameter. Now inspect the patient's skin to detect signs of respiratory or other disorders, such as cyanosis, pallor, superficial venous patterns, and overly prominent ribs. Also use this opportunity to locate thoracic landmarks and visualize underlying structures. This will help pinpoint your findings later in the examination. Do the same for the patient's lateral thorax and posterior thorax. Let me take your pulse now and you can just relax and breathe properly. While palpating with the patient's pulse, determine his respiratory rate which usually is 12 to 20 breaths per minute. In a child, the respiratory rate normally is much faster, ranging from 20 to 40 breaths per minute for an infant to 16 to 20 breaths per minute for a 10-year-old. By age 17, the rate usually is the same as an adult's. I'm going to shine this light on your chest so I can monitor your respiratory. Also, note the patient's respiratory pattern and chest movement. He should breathe easily and evenly, and his chest should expand symmetrically, with no bulges or accessory muscle use. Next, listen for respiratory sounds while observing his face. You should hear no strider or wheezes, and see no nasal flaring, lip pursing, or cyanosis. Check the patient's fingers with the Shamroth technique. The fingers should be normal. If you see clubbing, suspect a cardiopulmonary disorder. After warming your hands, begin palpating the muscles and bones of the thorax, which should be symmetrical. There should not be any pulsation, tenderness, bulges, depressions, masses, or sensations, such as crepitus or rubs. Also, palpate for thoracic expansion. With your thumbs at the level of the tenth rib, watch your thumbs diverge during respiration. Usually, they move in and out symmetrically with each breath. Now I'm going to do the same thing to your chest, so please keep breathing normally. Place your thumbs along the costal margin and xiphoid process, and watch them diverge as the patient breathes. They should move equally. Now assess for tactile or vocal fremitus by palpating symmetrically as the patient repeats a few numbers or words. Number 99, slowly. 99. 99. Using a light, even touch, compare the fremitus on both sides with your palms, or the ulnar aspect of your hands. 99. 99. That's great. Now I'm going to do repeat this assessment on the anterior thorax. Expect to feel the most fremitus on both sides of the sternum over the second intercostal space, where the bronchi bifurcate. 99. 99. To palpate the trachea, place both thumbs, or your index finger and thumb, in the suprasternal notch. Then slide them gently up and out to the side. The trachea should be midline above the suprasternal notch. 
Now percuss the thorax systematically and compare each side bilaterally. Plan to percuss in a sequence, such as this one for the posterior thorax, both sides of the lateral thorax, and the anterior thorax. exposes the lungs better. For the lateral and anterior thorax, this position offers better lung exposure. In all locations, note the intensity, pitch, duration, and quality of percussion tones. You should hear dullness over the ribs, heart, and diaphragm, and resonance over the lung field. Because young children usually have thinner chests, they typically have hyper-resonant percussion tones. Similarly, older patients may display hyper-resonance because of increased lung distensibility. The distance between the tape marks, or diaphragmatic excursion, should be 3 to 6 centimeters on each side, and the diaphragm should be slightly higher on the right because it sits over the right lobe of the liver. Next, auscultate the lungs, comparing sounds from side to side to assess the condition of the respiratory tract. I'd like you to take some deep breaths through your mouth. That's good. Now breathe at the pace that's comfortable for you. Using the diaphragm of the stethoscope, plan to auscultate in the same sequence you use for percussion. But for an older patient, Plan to auscultate the lung bases first, 
to detect common problems before the patient gets fatigued. At each point, note the intensity, pitch, duration, and quality of the breath sounds. Posteriorly, you should expect to hear bronchovesicular sounds over the main bronchi. These sounds have a moderate pitch and intensity. They're heard equally as long on inspiration and expiration. You should hear vesicular sounds over most of the lung fields. These low-pitched, soft-intensity sounds are heard longer on inspiration than on expiration. your arms above your head and keep breathing slowly and deeply. Laterally, you should hear vesicular sounds, which are especially prominent in the middle right lobe and left lingula in the axilla. Great. You can put your arms down and relax, but keep breathing deeply. Anteriorly, you should hear bronchial sounds over the trachea. These high-pitched sounds are louder and may be heard slightly longer on expiration than on inspiration. You should also hear bronchovesicular sounds over the main bronchi. vesicular sounds over the rest of the lung fields. In a young child, you're apt to hear bronchovesicular sounds throughout the lung fields because the thin chest wall transmits sounds better. However, vesicular sounds may still be more prominent. As you auscultate, Listen for adventitious or abnormal breath sounds. For example, you may hear crackles during inspiration. These discontinuous sounds may be high-pitched fine crackles. Last thing, please repeat the 
sound. Normally, you should hear a muffled E sound. But if the patient's E's sound nasal and like A's, he has egophony, another sign of lung consolidation. As you've just seen, inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation can tell you a lot about your patient's lungs and thorax. By using these four techniques consistently, and by considering their findings along with the health history and diagnostic test results, you can assess your patients fully and accurately.